All right, welcome back. This is unit one, lesson eight, graphing. This is our last lesson of this unit, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start by discussing the independent versus the dependent variable. The independent variable is also known as the manipulated variable. It's the condition in an experiment that is manipulated. It's the thing that's kind of being changed. The dependent variable is otherwise known as the responding variable. It's the condition in an experiment that changes due to the manipulation of the independent variable. It's what's responding as a result of the change that the researcher is doing in the experiment. So an example would be if we want to see how the height of plants changes based on the amount of water given. So if I have, let's say, five plants, they all have the same amount of fertilizer, the same amount of soil, it's the same type of plant. The only thing I'm changing is the amount of water I'm going to give each plant. So let's say one plant I give no water, another one I give this amount, the next one this amount, etc. So each plant is a different amount of water, but everything else is the same. The amount of water, that's what I'm controlling. That's the independent variable. In terms of the dependent variable, that's going to be a result of the amount of water. So each day I'm going to measure the height of the plant. So the height of the plant each day is going to be your dependent variable. It's changing as a result of the amount of water. So let's talk about a graph now that we know this. So your x and your y axis. So the independent variable typically goes on your x axis and your dependent will go on your y axis. So the next thing you need to add to your graph is some numerical scaling. So each axis needs numerical scaling that is spaced out to have the data take up the whole graph. You shouldn't have a tiny, tiny graph if your graph paper is really big. You want to try to spread your data out across the graph. Next, you're going to need a title. So every graph needs a title. So it's usually written in the format of a y-axis versus x-axis, so whatever your y-axis was, versus your x-axis. So another way of kind of thinking about that is if we were to sort of write it as our dependent variable versus our independent variable. So in the example with the plants and the water, plant height versus amount of water. Next, you need to add data points. So once everything's set up, you can go ahead and plot your data. And then you'll connect your lines. And you're only going to use a line of best fit if asked to. You're most likely going to just be connecting the lines. So let's talk about interpolation and extrapolation. So notice here I have a, an image that shows the red line is the data that has been plotted. And then there's a dotted line to kind of extend the data. So notice interpolated is kind of on the red line, whereas extrapolated is um, beyond the red line. So I want you to take a minute and see if you can come up with definitions for each of these. All right, now that you've taken a minute, Let's discuss the difference between these two. Interpolated is when you estimate data within kind of your plotted data set, whereas extrapolated is we're going to estimate beyond our data set. Um, one of our last things we're going to discuss is just graphing relationships. So there's two main types of graphing relationships, direct and indirect. Your direct is the one that's on the left, so as your x Axis quantity increases, your y also increases. And then your indirect, as our x increases, our y is going to decrease. It's also known as an inverse relationship. So there they are labeled for you. So let's talk about some guidelines for graphing. So you're going to follow the guidelines for constructing a graph that have all the proper parts. So axes, labeled, scaling title, plot, and then connect your points. You're going to analyze the data and estimate within and beyond your data set to identify trends. So they might ask you to identify a trend, so whether it be what do you think will happen or what is happening within, and then identify a relationship, direct, indirect. It's a very common question to be asked when you're analyzing a graph is what is the relationship here? So you can either state it as direct, indirect, or say as this increases, this is either decreasing or increasing. So that's pretty much it for graphing. I know graphing is something that you've done pretty much every year in science and math, but this is just kind of a little bit of an overview to get us set for when we do some graphing in chemistry. 
Thanks again and hope to see you soon.